We're about to go into the HP garage. This is the garage that the founders actually started the company in. And here it is, right in here. So we're going to just get a tour and take a look at um, what this is all about. So let's go in. Packard was married. He and his wife, this was two flats. Uh, they lived on the first floor, and Hewlett lived in this shed out here in the back that you can wander <laughs> into later. This is actually the house that Hewlett lived in, so let's go take a look. Not that big, so it won't you know, take that long to see it, but can we go in here? Here's, uh, hey, and there's Michael Reyes. Hello, Michael. Um, so this is basically where he lived. And if you just look, take a quick look around, there's a bed, a little cot right here. There's a sink. Apparently, he had electricity. A little bit of electricity. <laughs> um, here's his uh, little shirt. And then a lot of uh, blueprints. But as you can see, not, not really much to this. Not even a, a toilet or... And not even any heat. So, you know, it was the Depression. A lot of properties had what they would call the, the gardener's shed. And it just had a sink and a toilet. And there was room for a cot and a desk. Um, no heat. People seem to be really surprised by that. But he bunked in there um, for about a year and then he, he got married and moved into a house with his wife. But So the, the three of them, and Lucille was kind of an equal partner in the early days because she, she worked, she got a job at Stanford and her salary kind of helped keep things going, mm -hmm. uh, lived and worked here. Um, so. Then I was, you were saying, what kind of work did they do? So they started taking in odd jobs. They did uh, a harmonica tuner. They did a lot of stuff with electric, electric eyes. Yeah. They did a, um, a, a bowling alley foul line indicator. They did a, something to automatically flush the toilets in the men's rooms at Stanford. They um, took on uh, an electroshock machine for the doctor. Were, for were they the inventors of the automatic flush electric? No, like, no, we didn't get the patent on okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> but they would sort of take these odd jobs. Let me give you a little background before that. They graduated from Stanford in 1934 and they were friends. So just like, you know, people today go to college and sit around and say, hmm, we should start a company together. That's what they did. But they had a mentor, his name was Fred Terman, was their engineering professor at Stanford. Now his name is on the engineering building at Stanford. He's called the father of Silicon Valley. Terman also suggested what became our first product. Our first product was something called an audio oscillator. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Okay. So this is an audio oscillator. It was used in radio, telephone, um, and entertainment movies. It, it emits a pure frequency, a pure tone. So they would use it to test sound equipment. So you would calibrate equipment against it. And um, Hewlett was working on this as an experiment in the lab for his research fellowship. He's doing a um, project for terminal on negative feedback. So I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer, <laughs> sociology major, but uh, these existed in the market. Okay, so you could go out and buy an oscillator. It was $500. They were push button. You could test five or six frequencies. And um, they weren't perfect. They had trouble holding, holding the tone. Hewlett um, put a light bulb on the circuit. And so my basic way of explaining that is it, it, it um, compensated for fluctuations in the current going through the circuit. So it made an oscillator that could hold the tone longer um, and you could test more frequencies. So see ours is a, a dial here, it's called a variable frequency oscillator. So you could go from testing five or six to testing, you know, tens of uh, 20 to 200 range. They made these by themselves here in the garage. So this is each the other one sort of each one is individually hand. by hand. For one thing, they couldn't subcontract out because they were so small. I mean, they tried to subcontract out the steel, um, but they ended up having to cut it themselves. They'd paint it themselves. They'd bake the paint on it in the kitchen oven. So that's our famous story. Yeah, they did all the wiring by hand, and later Hewlett, you know, they would bring an old one to him and he would just laugh at like how messy the wiring was and everything. 
But because they were doing that, they could sell it at a profit for $71.50. That was their, their price. Competing oscillators aren't as good, they're $500. So the things really took off just oh, because wow. you true. got a better product for much, mm -hmm. I mean, significantly less, significantly lower price. And um, that's when we got our first, uh, in the fall, 38, we hadn't incorporated yet or anything. They were just kind of experimenting with this. Disney ordered eight of them because Disney was working on Fantasia. And when Fantasia came out, they uh, they opened it in 12 theaters. They, it was kind of an early version of like Dolby Sound. Disney wanted it to sound the same no matter where you saw it. So they had special 12 specially equipped theaters. You can read old engineering articles about this. And they used this to test the equipment in those theaters. So they bought eight of them. That was our first high volume sale. <laughs> it started here with, you know, tools that mostly that Packard had brought back with him from GE because GE had a policy where if tools were broken or they weren't using them anymore they'd let employees take them and use them to work on their own projects and we actually have in the archives the list of stuff he said he could bring and, and Hewlett had some cash so the company started with $538 $38 of that was the value of this the drill press and then $500 cash did they also borrow a lot of stuff from Stanford? Or? I think so. This again is, is recreated, um, and all <coughs> this stuff is of the era, but yeah, and I think they worked up there too. I think it was pretty much a very casual Next relationship thing. between them and, and the lab. This is the only picture we have of them in the garage. So this is a 19, I think it was taken around um, Christmas 1938 just because of some things Packard said. It's a staged picture. Okay, so Bill didn't usually wear a sport coat when he was working out here. <laughs> but um, you can see our, um, our manufacturing line. So they named our first product the 200A. These are actually more recent. They had uh, rounded the rounded corners. These are the A's. Well, when Disney um, asked them, for the eight oscillators, they actually wanted some modifications, which we did, so we called that the 200B. So again, our early marketing, they wanted us, people to think they were bigger than they were, and right. not two guys in a shop with one product. So do people know they were in this garage? Like from this picture, you can't um, really tell it's a garage. Well, I, I haven't heard anything specifically about that. I do know that later we moved to some rental property and they were doing some army work and they had a general come out and the general came in and was like, this is it, you know, it was like 30 people in this tiny building over right. here and everything was kind of, you know, uh, early growth, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say slapped together, but, you know, very, very small. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that um, people were surprised about that and, and they, they certainly didn't advertise it. Our first ad um, corrects me up, it says, um, it has the address, 367 Addison Avenue, that's you know, the garage. And then it says, call department A for information. Wow. <laughs> like, I don't know, A was Lucille or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> so they kind of kept that that going. We didn't get into computers till the late 60s, a lot right. of people. And, and the way we got into computers was they were building controllers for all this measurement um, and signaling and microwave stuff. Um, so again, I, I can't remember the exact names, but signaling and um, sound stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, and wave analyzers and things like that. So the company boomed during World War II, it, it definitely, you know, we went up to 200 employees. Mm -hmm. And um, Hewlett served in World War II, he was uh, in the Army Reserve, he was called up, and Packard ran the company um, while he was gone. He got, Packard got, I think, a dispensation because we ran, you know, we had this manufacturing company. And they were running two shifts and putting people on and it was very much one of those World War II uh, kind of situations, you know. Um, but the other thing that happened was Hewlett ran a signal research <coughs> when he was there. So he uh, did two things from that. He, after the war, recruited all the best engineers out of all these labs, the lab at Harvard, the lab at MIT, and brought them to HP. So they had sort of the best, the best. And he also, you know, had a window on these technologies that were coming out of the war. So, so that's why HP was able to grow so much after the war. That sort of period of applied technology. You know, Mike, that's when we got into different businesses like microwave. Mm -hmm.
How did they come up with the name HP? Why not PH? They flipped a coin. Really? Yeah, they flipped a coin. True story. <laughs> and Hewlett won the coin happy. toss. Huh? I bet you knew it was happening. Um, well, it's kind of convenient, isn't it, that it didn't come out PH? Yeah, but exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think if it was PH and 30 years from later, people said Packard Hewlett. <laughs> they would think it sounded better than you the Packard. I guess you're right. <laughs> Maybe. Nah. Depends on what you're used to. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Logo hasn't changed that much. Or half the talk about it. Oh, really? We'll comment on oh, okay. that. So yeah. that's actually the original logo that was on those things. Yeah, our first logo, these Check are not out. quite, amazing. these are, our first logo was developed in 41. So again, these are a little newer old, as, yeah as old as I could get right. but um, yeah the circle HP was the first <coughs> logo and uh, they were very consistent over the years and the blue too because they liked blue so right. they picked okay. blue you know <laughs> flip a coin yeah. favorite color is blue exactly yeah. Yeah, very simple <laughs> right no uh, no consultants yeah. <laughs> what else is in the grad well this is a ham radio set <clears throat> so Dave Packard was a ham as were many uh, engineers then, as are many now, actually still in the company. And actually the way he met Terman was he would hang out in the ham radio shack at Stanford and Fred Terman would poke his head in every once in a while, see who was there, and that's how he met his students. He actually invited Packard to, he gave a special class for graduate students on um, radio, engineer, radio engineering, but um, Packard was invited as a, I think a senior to take it. So um, when we did the restoration, when you go back out, you'll notice there's this pole on the roof. And I thought it was like for a clothesline. I never, I never really paid much attention to it. <coughs> the contractors found the antenna wire coming down from it through, they, they left it for me, through, through to here. And um, so I thought it was reasonable to assume that, you know, maybe Dave said his set up out here and uh, enjoyed his hobby once in a while. So that's it. Not much else though. Not many tools, you know. Uh, just kind of what they needed while they were while they were here. And like I said, yeah, they filled everything themselves. So that in the kitchen oven, that was the other tool. All right. <laughs> the baking facility. Yeah. And then this is the house um, where they baked uh, the metal in, in their kitchen uh, stove. So they didn't have much money. The American dream. I'm Michael Bay, and I demand things to be awesome. Awesome pussycat. Awesome barbecue. Awesome pool. That's why I'm getting Verizon Fios. With the awesomest upload and download speeds. Yes, sir. Blows cable away. This is Fios. This is big.